Vivid Lump with Motorola Solutions. All right, so what we have here is a wide variety of uh, portable radio products that we uh, typically distribute here in the Philippines. Uh, and these radios are typically used by public safety, public safety being police, fire, and ambulance, uh, as well as some military and uh, other heavy industries that may be dealing with hazardous environments. So we have a, a few radios here that I can show you. Like, for example, these radios right here, they're in black color. A lot of uh, law enforcement officers typically like these kinds of radios. One radio happens to be a single band radio, the other radio happens to be a dual band radio, meaning that it actually covers two different frequency bands. We also have here, you'll notice these yellow radios. These yellow radios are Yellow, yellow, green. Uh, yellow, yellow, green. Actually, this is actually this color here is actually called Fireman Yellow. Oh, okay. And the reason why it's called Fireman Yellow is because this is actually the, the shade of yellow that's actually preferred by fire service. Mm. Firemen love this particular color because whenever they go into a, a burning building, a smoky, smoky building, they can still have visibility to this particular color and this radio, so it doesn't get lost from them. We also have here. A uh, Coyote Brown radio. This one happens to be for military use. Uh, a lot of tactical officers, commando teams could actually use that. Also, uh, paramilitary and SWAT organizations can also use it as well. Mm -hmm. So this kind of shows you the, uh, the range of radios that we have for public safety. For public safety. So your target market is the government, mostly the government. Yes. Uh, the target market for all of this is mostly the government, but it can also be used a lot in heavy industry as well. So, for example, like oil and gas companies, uh, utilities, transportation companies like airports, seaports, uh, rail uh, companies, all of them can also use these type of radios uh, for their operations. Do you have an existing uh, contract already with a government agency? Yeah, as a matter of fact, today we already supply into several Filipino uh, organizations. We supply into the government, like uh, Philippines National Police. Uh, we supply into AFP as well. Uh, we've already sold a number of these to your LRTs. Uh, so, uh, Morocco has also purchased some of our radios before uh, as well. All right. Uh, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. All right. You have more to say? So let me, let me show you another different type of product that we have. This is a new uh, radio that we have. Uh, it's actually a cell phone called the Lex L10. What this device is, it's, it's a real cell phone that happens to operate on LTE bands. Um, so it'll operate on a 4G uh, system like uh, what you have here with Smart or Glow. Uh, but beyond that, this radio is not just your typical cell phone. This is actually a ruggedized cell phone that was actually de developed and designed for public safety. So uh, a regular cell phone, for example, uh, when you drop it, you can break it, mm -hmm. right? Whereas this is actually ruggedized. This is designed in such a way that it can survive a four foot drop to concrete. Another thing is that our regular cell phones you can't operate it in, in uh, rainy weather, especially like a typhoon. If you were in the middle of a glowing rain situation, rain can actually get into these uh, uh, consumer cell phone devices. This is actually IP67 rated, which basically means it can actually work in an environment where you have glowing pressured water blowing onto this thing. And it, it is sealed well enough that it will actually continue to work without any problem. Another thing about this radio that's very different it has very loud loudspeakers. So if you're in the middle of the street in, in Makati here, using a regular cell phone, you wouldn't really be able to hear the audio. You could not conduct a conference call with this. Whereas with this, you can. You can it has very, very loud audio. So you can actually hear it uh, quite well. Uh, finally, one of the other interesting features about this radio is that it actually has a large push-to-talk button something that you normally get on a, on a two-way radio, a push and walk button. Normally cell phones don't have this, but we actually designed this into the L10, so that way you could actually use it like a, a walkie-talkie. Uh, very different. Now, what I have here is a demonstration of how it is that I can actually interconnect a cellular type device that operates on cellular frequencies or on Wi-Fi, which is what I have here, I can actually communicate with a Tetra radio or a P25 radio. So, 
if I were to, if I were to hit my push to talk, I can actually talk into oh. my cell phone, and then from there it comes out into a Tetra radio. Wow. I can switch channels to a P25 channel. I can then hit my push to talk. And now I'm communicating to an Astro Radio. Oh, wow. So, the advantage to this, yeah. it solves the interoperability problem. Mm -hmm. So there are so many times what, what happens is we have a lot of people who are maybe city government officials or decision makers or politicians who have access to resources during an emergency and they like to use cell phones. All right, they don't have a walkie-talkie mm -hmm. by them uh, so to, to be able to communicate. So what happens is we can actually, through this type of a system, actually enable the government official to listen to what is going on in the disaster area as they communicate, and then they can actually hear and communicate back to the disaster area through their, through their cell phones. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the cool things that we're now able to do. But how about the other way around? Can this phone, uh, this radio contact this cell phone? Yes, it, yeah. absolutely. It's a, it's a full two-way radio operation. Oh, okay. So people here can actually talk to a, uh, a person over here on the cell phone very easily. They can initiate the call? Yes, they can initiate the call. Okay. All, all the way through. Oh, wow. Yes. So this oh. is how Motorola has gone to actually solving the interoperability problem. But which is better if the they just buy, buy this one? and then get rid of this radios. <laughs> uh, actually, that's not quite the way that it works. The, the thing about these radios is that you'll notice that the slim size of it, mm -hmm. and it's because it's an LTE device, it's actually purposely designed to be low power. Ah, okay. So the problem with this is that this radio, you can't talk radio to radio, mm -hmm. cell phone to cell phone. And if you do, it's not going to be a very close distance. It has to be a close distance. You can't talk very far. Mm -hmm. These radios, because these things are actually uh, high power, meaning that these things are like 1 to 6 watts, all right, as opposed to 200 milliwatts, um, these can actually talk a great distance. All right? okay. we're, we're, we're talking in terms of kilometers. Mm -hmm. Here, we're only talking just a few meters. All right? So there's a big difference in, in it. The other, the other thing is that these things are actually ruggedized and designed for very, very tough operating environments, mm -hmm. like in a disaster area. Mm -hmm. uh, these devices may not necessarily work very well in those types of very, very hazardous and rugged areas. These devices, you're going to have a lot of aid workers, you're going to have military people, you're going to have public safety people. They're going to be wearing gloves out there. So you've got to have a device that you can actually put in a, mm -hmm. a glove can. All right? These don't work very well with a glove can. That's the reason why these things are purpose-built mm -hmm. for different types of scenarios and situations. So right? probably that's designed for the higher-ranking officials. Yeah. These would be designed for like higher-ranking officials, government mm -hmm. officials, yeah. uh, senior commanders. The one in will, the base. The one in the, the, one the base or at the office. The office, right. These mm -hmm. are going to be out in the field. The field, yeah. That's right. So, the one is with all the action. <laughs> right, exactly. Then you'll be dropping these in mud. Yes, yes. You'll be yes. dropping them on gravel. Water. Or mm -hmm. So these can take the hit. And yes. that's what these are designed for. Mm -hmm. Right? Very good. Very good. <laughs> so, uh, one last question. So, how much is the system? If we're going to look at it. All right, that all depends. Uh, it depends on the type of design that we're actually looking for. There are systems that can be designed uh, by the government for the government that covers an entire province or an entire nation. So it all depends on how much you want to spend. We can also design systems that just cover one small village okay. locally. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can design it any way that you want. It all depends on how much you're willing to spend and, and what kind of communications do you really need for, those, for that particular area. We can design something very simple, very cost effective. Uh, we can also design something very, very uh, 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 redundant and fault tolerant enough that it'll survive the worst of the worst type of disasters. For example, we actually have designed a lot of systems in the eastern seaboard of the United States that survive earthquakes and category five hurricanes, which is the worst of the worst of hurricanes. And our systems will actually survive, so that way, in the aftermath of the uh, hurricane, uh, our first responders and our, and our 
public safety people can get in there immediately to go and help the injured and the wounded uh, and start the work of disaster recovery. Um, but that's the United States. That's how they want to do things. That's where they want to put their investment. My recommendation for here in the Philippines is that if you really want to be able to, to bounce back from a disaster very quickly, put the investment in a very good radio communication system that allows you to communicate with the, the community in the aftermath of a disaster. Um, design it in such a way that it survives the disaster, whatever it may be that coming in, into that area. Uh, it can be done. We've done it before uh, many times with many customers in, in the U.S. and uh, all across the world in many other countries. Uh, I used to work for the U.N., the United yeah. Nations. I was their ICT officer. Okay. And we used to be using the radios, UHF and VHF uh, communication. Have you recommended this kind of uh, gadget to overseas, or the, the, the UN, like something like the UN? Oh yes, the UN buys a lot of Motorola radios, and yeah. have been for many years. So how about that particular model? This particular model is just coming out. So oh, it's not yet out. It's, it's very soon. Right. Okay. It's, it's almost out. It's right. almost out. Uh, do we expect a date, a uh, month? The first quarter this year is when we're expecting this to really okay. be released out here in the Asia Pacific region. It already has been released in the United States, but for Asia Pacific we're expecting it in Q1 this year. So hopefully next month. Uh, I'd love to have you check out all of our technologies. The wave technology that we've invested in is an excellent technology to actually survive, uh, to help you with a lot of uh, disaster management uh, communications, as well as uh, disaster recovery communications. Um, it's an excellent technology that we are now uh, uh, able to deploy. Uh, also come in and pick up a lot of our radios uh, here in the Philippines. Uh, radio has been uh, in use for a long time. Uh, the Philippines have been uh, a partner of ours for over 40 years. We've been in the Philippines for more than 40 years uh, selling radio into so many of the different organizations. And we love the Filipino people and we love helping you guys in, in uh, growing your economy and helping you through all your disasters. And we want to continue helping you guys. Um, uh, so we're, we're here for the long term and uh, thank you very much for being our customer.